Hello to all my viewers, this is Magical Amazing, and today's video is going to be on how I made my Benelli M4 Super 90. This gun is fairly straightforward and easy enough that I actually only had to remake one part, and that'd be the handle because the corrugation was slightly misaligned the first time. So let's get started. As usual, I'm going to start out with a scale picture of the gun on a piece of paper, just the main body in this case because that's all that would fit, and I'm going to cut out this shape. I'm going to use this as a stencil to cut out the shape that will fold into the main body. This is the shape that's going to be bent into the body of the gun. Here you can see that piece I cut out before as my stencil. I left some room between it to allow for the bump. This is what it's going to look like once it's all folded, giving the top of the gun a rounded appearance. Once I was sure that was the right size, I went ahead and cut out the shape of the ejection port. I then made a cardboard cylinder of this length, which will become the main part of the bolt. A roll of paper and a triangle shaped piece of cardboard like this will become the locking lugs. And here's what it looks like once they're attached. I cut out a strip of cardboard, which I'm going to attach to the bottom of that piece to keep the body of the gun in shape. Here's what it looks like. Next, I insert the bolt assembly and mark on it where the charging handle is going to attach to the bolt. Once I've punched out the hole in the bolt where the charging handle is going to go, I'm going to insert it to make sure it's still in the right place, and I'm going to use a tightly rolled piece of paper as the charging handle and stick it in that hole. Here I'm just making sure it's in the right place, it's sticking out straight, and that you can pull the bolt back by pulling the charging handle back. Once I'm sure everything lines up, I'm also going to poke a hole in the main body of the gun where you see it here beneath the charging handle. I'm also going to drill a little bit of a hole onto the other side of the main body of the gun, but it's not going to go all the way through. What I mean by that is you're going to see a little bit there, but that's just going through the inside layer and the corrugation, not the outside of the gun. With the charging handle in place, I'm going to turn the bolt 90 degrees, and at the bottom, what will be the bottom of the bolt, I'm going to poke another hole. I also have a thick roll of paper I'm going to stick in that as well. This will help guide the bolt and hold the rubber band. A small square of cardboard with a hole poked like you see is sized so that it can fit inside the gun and slide smoothly. Now that piece of paper that's coming out of the bolt 90 degrees from the charging handle is cut down to size so that it'll ride inside the gun, and I'm going to attach this piece like that. Here you can see the fully assembled bolt assembly, and this is where the rubber band is going to be on that. I'm just going to loop it behind that piece of paper. Here you can see how the bolt fits in and where it goes. Now I'm going to poke a tightly rolled piece of paper through that hole I made earlier and through the rubber band, which is going to allow the bolt to spring forward. Here I'm just testing with it in place to make sure it does work. Here I've glued in a panel with just enough space for the bolt to pass over it as a bit of reinforcement to the gun. A really small circle like this is going to be used to cap the end of the piece of paper that's holding the rubber band to the main body of the gun. This is what I mean. The charging handle started out as these two pieces. That's the piece of paper that I had before cut down to the right length, and then I wrapped that piece of cardboard around it for aesthetic purposes. After gluing it in place, this is what it looks like. Moving to the back of the gun, I'm going to cut out a piece of cardboard that looks like this, and this is going to be bent so it continues the bump on the back of the gun. Here's what I mean by that. This shape here is going to be the aesthetic little cover on the back of the gun. That's what it looks like on the real gun, and here's how it's going to be attached. To make this piece, it was a lot of trial and error in trimming to get it so that it fit just right. I'm going to start work on the handle and trigger area by cutting out two of this shape. They're going to be attached to the back of the gun like this. Notice how they are tapered inward on the bottom, and the front parts are curved toward each other a little bit. Next, I'm going to use a strip of cardboard to cover that gap in the front between the two pieces I just added. The handle started out as two of this shape, 
which will then be connected together using a cardboard strip. Here's what the handle looks like once the two halves are connected. The next step was fairly straightforward, I just glued on the handle. For the grip pattern, I removed the outer layer of cardboard from both handle sides in this shape. I started the trigger guard by cutting out two of this shape and attaching them together with a cardboard strip. Here's what that looks like. And then I covered the inside to get rid of the hole. Here's the gun when the trigger guard is glued in place. I'm going to take a strip of cardboard like this and add it to the underside of the front of the gun to give the bottom of it a little bit more shape. Then I'm going to cut a recess in the cardboard where the loading gate will be. Notice that I didn't cut all the way through and just removed the top layer in corrugation. Next I cut out this shape which is going to cover the hole I just made. I'm going to attach it at a bit of an angle because that's how it is on the real one. I started work on the barrel and it's just a long tube of layered paper. To allow space for the bolt which is sticking out a little bit from the front of the gun, I cut out a circle like this which I'm going to attach to the barrel. This is going to fit over the bolt without stopping it from coming all the way forward. After gluing on the barrel and making sure that I didn't get any glue on the bolt, here's what it looks like. The front grip started out as a strip of cardboard like this, which I then rolled into a cylinder and pasted onto the front of the gun. Here's how it looks. This is a bit of a better view from the side. I took another strip of cardboard that I cut like this, which I'm going to wrap around the one I just put on there to add some girth and give it some shape. Here's how it's going to be glued on. Once it's all glued up, here's what I came up with. To give it the shape of the actual grip that's on the shotgun, I had to cut out a thin piece of cardboard in this shape and wrap it around again. This allowed me to give it the tapered pattern on either side and the grip on the bottom. The front part of the magazine tube, which sticks out under the barrel, looks like this and is a bunch of rolls of paper and some cardboard strips. Here's what it looks like once I've attached it into the grip. I'm going to cut out a couple more pieces of cardboard for some detail and cover the gap between the magazine tube and the barrel right here. Another little bit of detail comes in the form of this strip of cardboard, which I'm going to wrap around like this. The front sling mount is a piece that looks like this. This is layered thin cardboard to give it some rigidity, and I'm going to be putting it over the magazine tube right here. I did glue this on. Out at the front of the barrel and the magazine tube here, I wrap the strip of cardboard like this around to connect the two together. At this point, I'm just looking over the entire gun to make sure everything looks right and is lined up and straight. I'm going to start on the cap on the end of the magazine tube, which is going to be a strip of cardboard in a circle like this, and an arc of cardboard, which is going to turn into part of a cone. Here's what it will look like. Next, I'm going to glue them together and cap the end with a bit of cardboard. Here's what it looks like once it's glued onto the gun. Now I'm going to begin work on the stock with a rolled up piece of paper and a piece of cardboard like that, which will help it keep anchored in place. I'm going to attach it to the end of the piece of paper for some extra stability. Here I've wrapped a bit of cardboard around the end of the piece of paper, which is going to give it the illusion that the slot can slide, even though it can't. And then I cut out this oval shape, layered it three times for the back of the stock. I'm not going to leave the corrugation showing, so I cover it up with a thin strip of cardboard. Once the corrugation was covered, this is how I attach the oval to the rest of the stock. Here's a bit of a better view from the side at the angle at which I attach the ellipse. Some detail on the bottom of the stock is just a thin piece of cardboard like this with a hole punched out in the middle of it, and I just glued it on. At the top of the stock, I'm going to cut out a piece that looks like this, which will act as the rear sling mount if you so desire to use a sling, and attach it like so. The cheek rest started out with cutting out a piece like this. This isn't going to go on the actual gun, but I am going to use it to trace it to make a piece like this. I traced it here on the bottom, and then I traced it again at the top, leaving a bit of room in the middle for it to fold. Once it's all cut out, here's what the shape looks like. 
I removed a bit of the corrugation from the middle of that to allow it to bend easier and cut out a strip which I'm going to use to allow it to keep its shape. Here you can see I've glued the strip inside the cheek rest so it can stay folded. I cut out a couple pieces which are going to be used to cover those notches because on the real one they're indented a little bit and this is what it came up with. For the right side of the non-adjustable cheek rest I cut out a shape like this and glued it onto the little indent that I had made before. The opposite side is going to be taken up by these two pieces, a small circle of cardboard and a tightly rolled piece of paper are going to be glued into the left side notch of the stock. The next step was just gluing the cheek rest we had just made onto the rest of the stock. To make the butt pad of the gun I'm going to cut out another ellipse like this and wrap a strip of cardboard around it in this shape. And nothing fancy here, just glue it onto the back of the stock. The front sight is made of these four pieces and I'm also going to be gluing a small tightly rolled piece of paper to the underneath side like you see here as a little bit more detail. With all the pieces connected and assembled, here's what it looks like attached to the barrel. Here I'm going to cut out this shape, which once again I'm only going to be using as a stencil to bend the piece I'm making into this shape. I'm also going to take that thin piece of cardboard you see there on the left and cover the inside to give it a little bit more depth there. The details inside the sight are going to be the aperture and a little screw head like this. This is the position I added them onto the sight. I made another little small screw and glued it onto the right side of the rear sight and then glued it onto the gun. The trigger is pretty simple, I just traced out the shape of the trigger, layered it a few times and pasted it into the gun. The rail is going to be these two pieces. Notice I removed the corrugation from the top of the rail to give it the ridges. Here's what it looks like once I've glued the T-shape onto the bottom. Here's the gun with the rail glued in place. Now the only thing left to do is to attach the stock to the rest of the gun, which I just did by inserting it into the body, and I was done. If you like this gun, and you like this video, and you want to see more, I have videos like this on all of the guns you see right now, and more. Thank you all for watching, this is Magical Amazing, signing off till next time. See y'all later.